Okay, <laughs> good afternoon, my dear audience. I'm happy that you are the selected people to, uh, to attend my speech. I know it's Friday afternoon, so I try to keep it to the point and short, but nevertheless, let's have a debate on this and maybe we will uh, have some nice questions as well. Um, let's take the first one. This week, good afternoon, you just missed the first slide, so pl please be, uh, feel invited. It's a special week today. There are many things changing in the world. And then I do not only mean about politics, be it on this continent or another continent, but also, as you, I think you all know, there's a major event taking place on the global climate change. And as you also know, there's a big group of people uh, taking action or taking non-action of that, let's say, to strike for global change, global, uh, let's say, against uh, global climate change. This speech about this afternoon is well about the climate and what we could do in our branch to, uh, let's say, to prevent that from happening. So as such, we rather take action, uh, let's say, to prevent climate change. As you can see, I'm now uh, more than a year commercially accountable for Aspiritas and before that, 10 years in data and design. We designed facilities in the old-fashioned way with a lot of heat going out. That's something we're going to change. For those of you uh, who have been in the event in San Jose earlier this year, you might have seen this, this graph. What it shows, it shows the path we've done already all together by bringing down energy consumption of a facility, let's say measured as PoE, close to one, which is good. And of course, it's, that depends a bit of the climate you're in. In a Dutch or Nordic cli climate, it's quite easy to go close to one. But in hotter climates, it's quite a challenge, if not impossible. Having said so, the real challenge, of course, is what you can do, let's say, as a, as a uh, circularity on the energy that you turn from electricity into heat. Because what we all should bear in mind, energy is not lost, it's only used. And what we do in our work, we transform electricity into heat, and that's it. And we earn a lot of money with that. But I think we can do more. Because what we more and more see these days is that data centers are facilities that, of course, have the core process of uh, uh, processing, storing, and so on, uh, IT, information and data and knowledge. But we see more and more that the energy part of the process is getting attention. In the old days, it was about cost and energy consumption. Now it's more about excess heat, about tax on excess heat, and what to do with that at the same time when we, when we see things in the press about global warming. As I said, it's more than ever a, what I would say, a hot topic. And not only with us. If you look at uh, Schneider, for instance, what you will see is a few articles of last month about the debate on heat and heat in our market and cooling in our market. Schneider clearly says, not only for the reason of density of IT, but also for other reasons, we need to rethink the way we cool our facilities. You may have heard that this very city, with another city, has said, we don't want any data centers more in this area. We want to block that for the simple reason we cannot just push all the heat into the air. And they more or less put a ban on building facilities. Of course, that's not what will happen, because many things are already planned and en route to be built. But it's a clear signal that, let's say, the Dutch government or the local government want to get it changed. And we're all part of that. That's another initiative in France, you may have seen as well. That's a major initiative to, uh, to combine different industry at a single location. This is in the center of France, where a conglomerate of companies would like to build a data center facility and, let's say, planning to use the heat in another industry, in this case, agriculture. That means you get more value out of your power that you buy, of course. You all know, I think, what at least the Europeans in the audience know what happened this summer in Europe. It was hotter than ever. That means heat and cooling and what to do with that is a hot topic. So apart from global change, it's also a technical challenge to cool facilities. And the last part, this was last month, a big article in a US paper also claiming there that they've noticed, of course, that the, uh, the uh, waste heat or excess heat, whatever you call it, that's produced by data centers needs to be dealt with somehow. And that's what we're here for. So I would like to introduce to you a unique opportunity. And what makes the opportunity I'll, I'll disclose to you unique 
is that it's about the location, it's about the utility supply, and it's also about cooling and value. And I'll make it clear to you. What we have, we have uh, combined since March four companies together to work on a unique project. First of all, it's a utility provider called Eneco, which is a major Dutch company supplying electricity and heat to individuals and industry. And with them, we combined a, an m and &E company being able to design facilities, an architect and also a specialist on urban planning, because what you'll see next is about urban planning as well, and ourselves. And what we have to offer is a technology to transform heat, and let's say IT power, into heat. So this is what we talk about. What you see in the picture is a picture of a power plant which is quite centrally located in the Netherlands. This is owned by Eneco at the moment. And what they have, they have a facility producing electricity and heat. And they supply both electricity and heat to clients around them, of course. What they also have is a plot available on that site that could house a data center. And they have power available to feed that data center. And they have a district heating system available over there to absorb the heat of the facility. That means when you look at the infrastructure it is at its broadest sense, we have all, the only thing you need, of course, is a data center within it. So when you focus a bit more on the location, which is called Lage Weide in the Netherlands, in Dutch, it is, there's land available on a very attractive position in the Netherlands with good connections to Amsterdam, Rotterdam, and around, of course. There are two high voltage feeds that feed in into the facility. That means when you talk about redundancy in your system, there's no need for a large backups or whatever or redundancy in your feeds. It's already there. And there's a 20 megawatts plus uh, envelope available for future clients. There is fiber. More importantly, I would say there's a network, a, a district a network heating system available uh, just adjacent to the facility where you could simply tap in your hot water if you would have to have hot water. It's industrial building that's there that you can easily upgrade into a data center facility. There is site security because this, which still is a power plant, is a, is a protected part in, as a facility in the Netherlands. Uh, there's site security, of course, and as I said, there's heat removal, or you can also say it's cooling with a cost benefit and a guaranteed redundancy because there's a river passing by where you could put in the, the heat as well. And the permitting has been done already. All these plans fit within the existing planning permit. So what we are talking about actually, and let's say the red part, that's the facility part. That means we have a company supplying the electricity and let's say giving a redundant feed into a data center. The same red company is entitled and is organized as such to take out the heat and take it to next clients and getting value out of that. And the municipality of Utrecht is very pleased to have this within their area because it fits within their, let's say, ambition on environment. And what's needed, of course, but I come back to that as well, is a facility and a client to make use of this option. So for the data center, that would mean that they would have far less capex than usual because most of the stuff is already there. Yeah. Eneco has a good chance to make uh, heat with a carbon-free footprint for, for the simple reason that the carbon, let's say, penalty is on the electricity supplied to the data center and the heat you take out is by definition carbon-free. And it helps asset the city of Utrecht uh, in the center of the Netherlands because it helps their sustainability agenda. So what does this offer to the facility user, owner, whatever we'll end up with? They don't need any gensets. They may also not need any batteries or very limited maybe. They don't need any chillers or cracks or cross. No raised floor, no air circulation system. They can purely focus on the IT process and everything that we call, let's say, the facility around the IT is already there. So the, the job of the data center operator is really focused on their IT performance, nothing else. It makes life easy. At the moment, where are we now? And this is a bit uh, out of date already. Let's say all the technology partnerships are in place. We have a first candidate uh, tenant 
on board and discussions are ongoing, ongoing. There is room for more tenants to step in to want to take this opportunity as well. That's an invitation to you all. And uh, of course, what, what we do in general, we aim to include these partners at an early stage because this is a kind of co-engineering, co-building the business with, the, with Ineco and all the others to make the best choice of technology and so on. So we're almost there. And obviously my call for action is, what do we need further on? We need people to step in. As said, we are, let's say, ready to step in now, but there's room for more people to step in on this one. We have the market. Uh, we want to make this an OCP facility for the simple reason that's what we all believe is a future direction. It, it, let's say it simplifies the data center as such. We have the technology inside, but we are always inviting companies to offer the newest technology that we don't have or haven't included yet in our plans. And depending on how we organize it, there needs to be financing, yes or no, that's it. That's my call to action. It's short for a simple reason. It's a Friday afternoon uh, uh, meeting, my friends. Um, I invite you all to questions, uh, otherwise to participate in this unique opportunity. The floor is yours. Mathieu. I would I wouldn't call it weakness. When you look at let's say weakness from a technical perspective, I think we've we've covered them all. But to be fair as well, what you see is the the market still finds it difficult to weigh the clear benefits of our technology. But that's something I'm I'm, I'm not discussing here in big detail because it should not be a commercial meeting. But I, th I think the issue is that the benefits we offer are too big to ignore by the market. So on the one hand, they understand financial benefits. On the other hand, they feel they may step into a technology that's really different from what they know. And this is a bit like comparing apples and pears or whatever you call it, it's difficult. And that's a process ongoing. We do that by uh, inviting uh, prospects in a, a proof of concept or a extended trial or whatever you call it to let them see themselves. I always say we cannot convince clients. They need to convince themselves. We can only assist that process. That's what we try to do. So I don't see real weaknesses. I'm not saying that our solution is the solution for all situations, because I don't believe in that. I do, however, think that the water is the, as the main uh, method of taking heat out is the future direction, be it in immersed, be it in rear cooling, or whatever you call it. Does it answer your question a bit? Any other questions? If not, you're still kindly invited to join our booth downstairs. We are at the end of the corridor. And if not, you know uh, on this page where to reach us. Thank you.